As you turn to your Bibles to Luke chapter 10, you've heard reports about the mark of the beast being some kind of mind control technology. And this video is going to show you that uh, I'm believing that to be true. And I think that the Great Reset has now begun. It is now here. And they've launched its first stages. Other people have heard reports about Elon Musk with his Neuralink, that with this Neuralink, basically if a person can think something, then the image on the screen will move and basically the computer will move and follow the commands of what you think. And so people have been concerned about some microchip that goes in the head and whatever you think, then the computer will follow along it. Basically, your mind is connected to the machine now. And scientists were laughing about that before until now. And Elon Musk's competitor actually launched theirs and it did work. They said that they've done this trial with this human who suffered this disease and it's been going on over a year and it's been going well, supposedly no adverse effects or serious adverse effects. It's really serious. That actually happened. Now, I'm not saying that the mark of the beast is already here, but what I'm saying is that the Great Reset is now beginning where it's laying out closer and speeding up the mark of the beast. So, Synchron, for some of you who've never heard of that, Synchron, title of the article from their official, uh, from FierceBiotech.com in MedTech by Andrea Park, the title is Synchron's Brain Computer Interface, Implant Deemed Safe After One Year in ALS Patient. So uh, what they call, they call it the Stentrode System, S-T-E-N-T-R-O-D-E. It reaches the brain via the jugular vein through a minimally invasive two-hour procedure that stands in stark contrast to most other operations under development, which typically require physicians to drill through the patient's skull. Once in place, the stentrode expands to fit flush against the blood vessel's walls where its sensors can pick up the brain's neurological signals. At the one-year point, researchers found that the implant stayed in place for all for patients, and that the surrounding blood vessels had remained open according to the study results presented this week. Yeah, no, this is real. This has happened. Another one from Synchron's, uh, from Synchron in the Business Wire, title of their article, Synchron announces first direct thought tweet. The tweet is, hello world, using an implantable brain computer interface. Now, remember, uh, some people may have thought I was crazy in last Wednesday's teaching in connecting Neuralink with Twitter. Remember, Elon Musk has the power of Twitter and Neuralink. And I was pointing out that this is paving the way where possibilities are open and there were professional tech agencies that I've quoted to you in these sources that says if you combine the powers of these two, it would be very, very scary. And now it happened through Musk's competitor, though. That's crazy. A patient with ALS in Australia is the first person to tweet a message to the world using only direct thought via the Stentrode Brain Computer Interface. Man, that's crazy. Miss, uh, the person is Mr. O'Keefe, a 62-year-old man with, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, I'm not good with medical terms, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, successfully turned his direct thought to text via Twitter when he messaged, hello world. So... What did he say? When I first, when he said this, when I first heard about this technology, I knew how much independence it could give back to me. Oh. Wow. The system is astonishing. It's like learning to ride a bike. It takes practice, but once you're rolling, it becomes natural. 
Now I just think about where on the computer I want to click. And I can email, bank, shop, and now message the world via Twitter. My hope is that I'm paving the way for people to tweet through thoughts. This is from Tech Times, title of the article, Paralyzed Man Creates First Ever Tweet Using Only His Thoughts Thanks to Implanted Brain, trip, brain Chip by Joseph Henry. Now, remember, they were making fun of you. Yeah. Yeah. They called you beep, 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 beep yeah. for being so crazy for saying this kind of stuff. By Business Insider, title of the article, this 20-person biotech firm just beat Elon Musk Neuralink in getting the okay to test brain chip implants in humans with paralysis. So now, think about it. If you're suffering these conditions, uh -huh. who would want to say no? Uh -huh. Instead of Jesus opening the eyes of the blind or Jesus getting the lame to walk, Imagine the people who can finally have their God, their Jesus, so to speak, or Satan, I'll show you the connection later, who can get them to see, to walk, to do all these things. It's only a matter of time when you can do other stuff, accomplishments like this. Man, yeah. that's insane. Yeah. Wow. This is what we've gotten into. Oh, really? Now, let me show you the scriptures. There's scripture for this? Yes, I believe there's scripture. Look at Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Think about this. If this is going on in the brain and then the concern from other people is, what if, what if the mark of the beast paves a way for this kind of stuff where the devil is able to take control of a person's thoughts and minds. Now, remember the guy said that he was independent, right? That's the devil's trick, is ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Right. You'll be free, yeah. but then enslaves them. So the concern from people is, what if machine betrays us? And I'm going to give you quotes from professionals that are concerned about that, including Musk himself. And they are afraid that artificial intelligence or machine, that when it gets a control, uh, that when we think we're in control of them, that those things will actually betray us and control us. Now, if that's what the devil can use to mind control people, let me translate it into spiritual terms. In the scientific terms, we may call it synchron and Neuralink, or being fearful of artificial intelligence with machine over man. But what's a scriptural spiritual term for it? But this is basically what? Demon possession. That's what it is. That's what demon possession is. The devil who has control over your mind and body and gets you to do what the devil wants you to do. You ever thought about that? Now let me show you something interesting in the scriptures about demon possession. Amen. Let's see what Jesus sees here. Amen. This is what Jesus said that he directly sees when there's demon possession activity going on. Come on. Look, Luke chapter 10 and verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy. At verse 17, the 70 returned again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. So what's going on is that these 70 disciples, they were able to cast out devils. So they were able to free people from devil possession. And they were excited about it. You know what Jesus described that as? When they were getting involved with demon possession into that world? Let's see what he sees. And he said unto them, verse 18, Jesus says, I what? Beheld. Jesus sees what? Yeah. Beheld Satan as lightning. Fall, fall from Falling from heaven. Like lightning. lightning. Satan 
is connected to e something electric. That's what Jesus sees. Amen. Isn't that strange? Why would Jesus say when there's demon possession going on, the de Jesus sees the devil as what? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Not like a guy with horns and going, oh, but rather as, <clears throat> yeah. That's good. That's good. as electricity going on, Amen. as some technology going on, electricity. See this blue stuff? <laughs> See all this blue stuff? You see electricity. You see technology. What does Jesus see? What does Jesus see? What does he beheld, as that verse says? Satan as lightning from heaven. Study the history of technology and electricity. You would not get that. And the first story they go to is Benjamin Franklin with his kite and lightning falling from heaven. Yep. Crazy stuff. Oh, and there are some interesting stories when Benjamin Franklin had some connection to some deists or maybe even Masons. Maybe. So it's some interesting stuff. You thought that this was crazy, that something like this would never happen to our world. Think about what can happen if this is now out and other people grab it what is the devil trying to do? He's trying to, which he already succeeded, is get you used to seeing this blue stuff. This is normal. Don't be in shock. You go back to the dark ages, they would have freaked out. Back in the Old Testament, New Testament, they would have freaked out. They would see it as demons. But then, we call it today science. And science drowns out any occultism or demonology. Now, I have an interesting teaching on that one day, all right? That's going to be real big one day. I'll teach that, okay? But you use science to drown out witchcraft, drown out demonology, drown out occultism. You call it science. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that uh, right now the electricity and the technology we're using is literally devils that we're playing with and we're playing with witchcraft i'm not saying that what i'm pointing out is the natural workings in our universe such as electricity the devil has a tendency to use it a lot yeah. and put himself in there at times and let's be honest when you've seen people play with and hooked on electricity technology internet video games etc you're seeing a different spirit in that person. Okay? That's what I'm pointing out right here. So Luke chapter 10 is that passage. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 through 18, where I demonstrated that. Get the people to be normalized with all this blue stuff. Now... See the rest of the world, how fast it's going. It's going super duper fast. Burlingame, remember that place, guys? Title of the article from Meta. Introducing Meta Store, a hands-on experience with our hardware in Burlingame here. You can go over there, and they want you to get used and touch Meta right now. How many of you want to take a church field trip over there, all right? Yeah, amen, let's do that, right? Soul winning over there, you know? <laughs> they got it out right now, guys. I kid you not, all right? Meta is going to take several years, but they launched the store. You know why they launched the store? They want people to get used to that kind of a meta world. So then they have a thing in which they call a portal. That's interesting, isn't it? They have a thing what they call portal. You go inside the Meta store, and if you want to be introduced to how the world is like, the Meta works, then you just play with this portal, which is basically uh, customer service uh, or AI in action through a salesperson. That's the idea. But there's another person on the other side of the portal that you talk to. And then in this portal you talk to, you're able to communicate with each other and take characters. And you can combine this avatar or character with the real you inside this portal and communicate. And this is not, this, the intention is for people who work at home so that you don't feel like you're away from your family at all. Inside this portal 
And that's a science term for it. Science term. Imagine how the, if, if the devil were to see, hmm, imagine where people can go through a spirit world portal and I deceive them where they can communicate through each other. Just like uh, these uh, people involved in occultism that claim that they're going through a portal when communicating with someone across the spirit world. Uh -huh. But just replace it with science. There you go. See, there's a lot of deep stuff there. Uh, I, I just gave a lot of key things away, but I'm not going to do that right here, all right? That'll be a really interesting study that I want to talk about one day. But they have a portal. They have that, you know, that uh, Ray-Ban uh, glasses where you can capture photos, videos, and then I think what you call it, the lens, Oculus lens or something like that. And then what they did with the screen, this was pretty smart. Instead of like a flat screen like that, they made it curved. So that why? So that you feel like you're inside that world and you're moving or making reactions with the screen. That's out. What are they trying to do? They're trying to normalize the people when the real thing comes out. I told you, the Great Reset, I believe, is already here. They're getting people to normalize to it now. The Guardian, title of the article, Cashless Society Draws Closer. Isn't that the mark of the beast where you don't use cash, but something where people claimed or were concerned about could be done electronically like a mark? Like that mark when you do your credit card? All right, if we're going to prepare for that mark of the beast, the devil has to normalize this too. If the Great Reset has to begin then you have to get people to normalize it, and we are. Title continues reading, Cashless Society Draws Closer with Only One in Six Payments, now in cash. Wow. Title from Forbes magazine, A Cashless Society is Imminent. Here's what we can expect for live events in 2022. <laughs> Title of the article, in Sweden, technology is close to making cash a thing of the past. All aboard with the cashless society. <laughs> That's found at uh, Sweden.se website. How about that? If you study especially the country of Sweden, they're really making heads and tails, all right? They're really making heads and tails where they're pushing the mark of the beast system much, much more imminently. You get people to be normalized to this kind of stuff. This is why you Christians need to do this. Go to Romans 12. Romans 12. Notice Paul is writing not to the tribulation, but to the church age. Why do you think God wants this verse at the church age? Because we are undergoing the great reset right now. And in undergoing the great reset, the devil is trying to normalize us into this kind of society and into this kind of world. It's very important that you don't fall for this trap. Now, uh, how much uh, this ministry or you in person uh, use more advanced technology is between you and God? Because obviously we're on YouTube, so I can't just accuse every ministry of being a Satan worshiper when they use YouTube or being part of the Great Reset. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm pointing out, though, is that ever since even long before technology, the Great Reset has been undergoing and running. I mean, ever since the birth of America, they've been conditioning, normalizing people for something evil. Uh, even our cash that we have has that pyramid in the back. What are you going to do, not use that dollar bill? So we've been conditioned already all this time. But the scripture wants you not to be addicted or caught up with so much technology that uh, you think that this is a great thing in the world. And let's be honest, the more you dabble with advanced technology, the more it does control your mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you lose sleep, and you lose your normal bearings, right. how to function with outside society, yeah. and knowing what good hard sweat is. So what did the, and sometimes, uh, if you've always wondered, guys, 
Why is it that uh, my mind's always in a jumble? Sometimes you have to ask yourself how often you do technology. It has a lot of truth in that, scientifically speaking. How, why do you struggle with vain imagination, especially through prayer? Well, what you've been watching. The mind. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not, isn't it interesting? What does it say? Conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is meta? What is Neuralink, Synchron, Twitter, everything doing to your mind? It's conforming, normalizing your mind to the world, how the world operates. God knows that, and that's why he doesn't want your mind to be conformed to this world that we live in today. See this blue stuff? This is our world today. God doesn't want your mind to be conformed to that. You need to transform it. Transform it by what? The renewing of your mind, spiritually, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Did you ever felt like your mind woke up when you shut down everything and started reading the Bible? Did you ever felt like you had a wake-up moment when you were going to the blowout, away from the technology yeah. and everything? Yeah. So it is important to understand that that's the world we live in, and God wants you to go away from that. Go to Col uh, 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4. Isn't it interesting that technology has a way where you feel like your mind has been uh -huh. yeah. basically in zilch mode, yeah. in blind mode? Preach. You ever felt like that? That's true. Who likes to blind your mind? Yeah. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. In whom... The God of this world. It's interesting God put world right there. Yeah, just like conform to this world. God, God's like seeing ahead in the future. God of this world hath what? Blinded the minds of them which believe not. Wow. Now, this is, uh, the devil is very smart. What is your mind blinded to and addicted to? Images, right? How does Satan brilliantly think of that? Because God knows God is doing the same thing, but not in the technological sense. Keep reading. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the what? Image of, Image of God, should shine unto them. That's powerful. Image is powerful. And God uses the image, and that's basically Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh. Amen. God uses that as the image to open our eyes. Amen and to open our minds to the truth. So the devil sees the power of that, and he says, I'm going to have me a technological image that can addict them. He knows how powerful images are. Here's another one. Go to the book of... Uh, man, there's so many verses on this. There's a lot of verses on this. Go to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Why am I turning to these verses? Because I'm trying to help you Christians live during that great reset. As you're living through this great reset, I'm giving you verses on how to live and survive. And that will help you determine how deep you should get into and how more often you should use more advanced technology. Even right now, the technology you use, how much you're spending time on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, etc. These are verses that's all the way in the old era, that still works today in such an advanced Amen. technology and society. Amen. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. And be what? Renewed. That's the solution in Romans 12 too, right? But through what? In the spirit of your mind. So God wants you to get your mind into the spirit. A Holy Spirit world, yeah. not the technology world that is run by the demonic spirit realm. Mm. Think about that for a while. Here's another one. This one is tribulation passage. This is interesting. Go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. This is a tribulation passage. For some of you who don't know, which I recommend, watch my video, Amazing Dispensationalism, 
from Genesis to Revelation, it will show you that the general epistles, including the book of Peter, is a tribulation epistle. So what happens in the tribulation? Go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the what? Loins of your mind. Be sober. Sober. See, the Bible knows you get phased. Your mind can get phased, addicted, controlled. It's as if God is seeing that their minds will not be sober in the tribulation. Like they won't be themselves. If you're sober, that means you woke up out of your sleeping state, your controlled state, right? That's what being sober means. Because if you're not sober, you're being controlled by something else, right? They call this spirits, don't they? If you're not sober. See, it seems like God is seeing, uh, is looking at something else at verse 13, like he's looking into the future. There are people whose minds won't be their own sober state. It's controlled, influenced by something. I wonder if it's... But keep reading. And hope to the end. That's tribulation. See that? You have to... The, the Bible is telling these tribulation saints, protect your mind all the way to the end. Like, protect your mind. Because something's going to invade your mind. Control your mind. For the grace that is to be brought unto you during when? At the revelation of Jesus Christ. See, that's during the book of Revelation timeline. It's like God's telling the tribulation saints, watch out for your mind. You better take a hold of it. Because something else is going to control it. Hold, it on, hold on to it till the end. Wow, isn't that eye-opening? That's very eye-opening. There's a lot of verses on this. But look, uh, I can't show you all the verses. There's so many verses in the Pauline epistles especially, about what Christians should do with their mind, and I hope that this will be helpful to you. There's a guy that some people are saying, you better pay attention to this guy, because this guy is part of the NWO system, and he is the, probably one of the darkest globalists you ever heard. And they say that this guy, he is actually a sodomite Jew. Now, the Antichrist is a what? And a what? So a Syrian and also a sodomite. Mm. Okay. Uh, now, I'm not saying he is the Antichrist, but there's a lot of... Uh, the, the spirit that's working in the Antichrist is already working in some people now, I'm saying. That spirit is spreading. Yuval Harari. How many of you have heard of him? Yuval Harari. Yuval Harari... That is a name you got to watch out for. This guy, he is, I mean, intensely interesting. I listened to his conversations. Very, very brilliant, this guy. He majors in history, and then what he does, see, like I told you, if you study history, you can predict, right? This guy studied history, and then when he studied history of civilizations, especially technology, he's able to predict what the next human reaction the human steps will be he is actually the le leading advisor to klaus schwab wow. remember who klaus schwab is he's the guy who uh who is in charge of the world economic forum where the world economic forum talked about the great reset yeah. in which you will own nothing and be happy you remember that yeah. that's yuval harari and he's also supposedly, supposedly they say this, he was known and called a prophet by Klaus Schwab. Uh, False prophet yeah. <coughs> by Klaus Schwab. Yeah. False prophet, Revelation 13. Anyway, but he's also, also <laughs> another thing about Yuval Harari, he is supposedly, they said, to be one of the favorite authors for Obama. Because Obama read his book, and Bill Gates even recommended his book too, and Facebook, the founder of Metaverse, recommended his book. Then you know that this guy is red light, red light, okay? Put every major globalist name praising one particular individual, you know that individual is a red flag. Yeah. Title of the article from Business Insider, Bill Gates 
Mark Zuckerberg, and Barack Obama all recommend this book. Here's what's, what it's about. And it's titled Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind by Yuval Harari. When the pandemic started, I had no idea, but CNN had Yuval Harari speak at the beginning of the pandemic. This guy was light years ahead compared to that idiot, that so-and-so at England, who said, lockdown is the best situation. Harari knew better. You know what it was? Why do you think that China and Korea and other places boasted earlier that we were able to control the COVID situation better? Because, uh, but now it's really bad. But back then they boasted it was better. Why? Tracking through technology. Harari says this. This was a very good argument, actually. It made a lot of sense. During the Dark Ages, when they had that Black Plague, they were doing lockdown. It still spread. I was like, huh, that's a good point. And he said, that's not how you're going to uh, get rid of this pandemic situation. He says it's tracking. We need technology to advance where it can track and find out the person who has the infection and then contain that infection and get rid of it. This was at the beginning, guys, of the pandemic. Title of the article from CNN, Yuval Harari. This is the worst epidemic in at least 100 years. You can look at that one. Here's another one from Yuval Noah Harari. If you've seen some of his quotes, it has been very disturbing. I've given some of the quotes in my previous video and referred to an article, but... Yuval Noah Harari, he said a lot of controversial stuff, like there's, he didn't believe in free will, for example. He believed that humans can be hackable animals. He even said stuff like government and corporations want to implant chips in you. And he even admitted things like that are happening right now where they can control you. I was shocked. My blood turned cold. He doesn't believe in the religious, uh, the Christian realm. So he is the favorite of scientists and even occultists, which I'll show later on. And I kind of gave indications of that at the beginning. The title of the article from Yuval Noah Harari, The Myth of Freedom. You know what he said here? Governments and corporations will soon know you better then you know yourself. Belief in the idea of free will has become dangerous. He, he's a very good Calvinist, you notice, right? He's a very good Calvinist right here. They don't believe in free will. I wonder how the devil could probably use that one day in the future. But anyways, title of the article from Wired, and it's so interesting. You get an ethicist, Tristan Harris. Uh, I'm a... I'm, a, uh, I'm kind of an intellectual freak guy, so I'm sorry. You know, if I kind of say this is very interesting and when you read it, you're like, this is too deep, this is so boring. But me, I'm into that because it helps me with what I'm teaching you right now. I'm giving you a lot of layman terms right now, but all this came from reading this kind of stuff, actually. From Wired Magazine, title of the article, When Tech Knows You Better Than You Know Yourself. And this is uh, historian Yuval Noah Harari with an ethicist, ethicist Tristan Harris, with uh, the editor-in-chief of Wired, Nicholas Thompson. And they play the whole video, and it is fascinating, actually. But basically, the idea, the long story short, even right now, he doesn't believe we're uh, free will humans because we're being controlled by the videos we watch. It's a recommended video. It attaches us, and we can't help but keep clicking on it. That's why he believes that technology has us hooked. So a lot of people have been warning about this guy. Now, to be fair, so I always try to be fair to the other side. That way people don't accuse me of misreading things. Yuval Noah Harari, it, when you read it, it may not sound like that he's a globalist where he wants government corporations to control people. It's actually the opposite. He's pointing out the fear of that. So he's saying that we should be able to put up, uh, study philosophy, get into, uh, discuss about ethics, 
and moral issues with the scientific community because pretty soon that technology, that monster is going to control all of us. So that's the idea. However, the thing is, he is not a safe person, one. And number two, he already shares the same idea that Bill Gates, Zuckerberg, and Obama and these guys love and they agree with. So because of that, I don't see him as an innocent person, especially when he says you don't have free will. What he's done then is open up the floodgates by admitting, well, we've got to lay out alternatives where technology doesn't control us as much and what we can do to come back against it. How can a guy who doesn't believe in free will talk like that? Then maybe, maybe the guys or big brothers who's in charge of setting up the morals and the ethics, they can be the ones to keep us in tab so we don't get controlled by machine, huh? Then maybe that's even more dangerous where a machine don't control us, but a few selected people, or maybe better yet, one really smart guy controls the machine and make sure that the machine doesn't control us. What does that mean? That means we're controlled by this guy on top then, who uses the machine to control us. That's basically what it translates to. Maybe that's what Harari is paving the way for. Yeah, wow. You think and pray about that for a while. I'm going to debunk his, all right? His intellectual arguments are actually very idiotic. Let's use scripture. First of all, Genesis 2. Genesis chapter 2. No, I don't believe in that. I believe in free will. So this debunks both Calvinism as well as uh, this, satanic, uh, this satanic teaching about uh, humans are hackable. They don't have free choice. Genesis chapter 2. He believes, this is his argument, and I think Sam Harris kind of went along these lines, that basically uh, we're not really independent people who have a soul. That's a strong argument for soul, actually. So we're not controlled by natural instincts or flesh. It's not, we're not, fall, uh, we, we haven't fallen victim to the whims of evolution. This system where conditions are laid out, and the reason why you chose to eat that or you chose to watch that video is not because of your free choice, they would say, but because of how your genetics are made of the environment you were born in. So because of these conditions laid out, it's not really a choice. It's a limited set of options that you pick. So that's not really free choice, they would say. You know what the easy argument to debunk that is? One, we obviously live in a world of limited options, but it's still free will and choice because choice Basic definition, Daniel Seeley is, smaller, uh, is smarter than Yuval Harari. She's smarter than Harari, maybe even smaller too, okay? But she is smarter than Harari by pointing out the definition of choice. You're, even if you have a limited option of two things, that limited, choice basically defines as picking one of the two. Oh, oh, oh what an idiot. This guy's so smart. Kiss his feet, man. Genesis chapter 2. Look what God did. He gave them, he told them this at Genesis chapter 2. In verse, 15, uh, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest what? Freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou shalt eat thereof thou shalt surely die. So notice that God recognizes the man has a free choice option. And by the way, there's only two choices right here where God says the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or the good trees, all right? <laughs> God considers that free will. He says freely. Well, what an idiot. Number two, go to James 4. James 4. Now, some people get upset at me whenever I say the word idiot, but uh, it, it bothers me so much is that you people don't really read the Bible. I mean, Jesus Christ used a lot of name calling and said fools. Basically, fool means idiot. Idiot is a more modern term. Look, look at James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Well, look at verse 7. James chapter 4, verse 7. Here's another one. You know why you know you have a free choice? Because even if those conditions or biological urges come in, you can resist it. 
You ever seen these people who are uh, addicts into drugs? And then that's how their mind and their body is programmed to be, but they can resist it. They can overpower it. Why? This guy is not as smart as you think he is. Look at James chapter 4. We'll look at verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. What does it say? Resist the devil and what? He will flee from you. You can resist it. They, that devil or those things don't have to have a control over your life. Amen. Here's another one. The third thing, which is so easy to debunk, is his hypocrisy. You know what his hypocrisy is? Because all these conditions and these things are set up in a way where humans don't have free choice in the technology world, we have to come back against that. You know what he admitted right here? He has the power to resist it. <laughs> Idiot! What a smart guy. This guy's a genius. Wow. Wow, I recommend his book too because he's so smart. What a, what a doofus, man. Yeah, I kick these globalists real hard. Amen. All right. So we've seen basically from Scripture how this is just fantasy in their minds that there is no free will. We believe that we do have free will. Will. We've seen these passages at Genesis chapter 2 and also at James chapter 4. But I would also highly recommend you to look up free will, type down free will in the Bible. What does that mean? You have free will. Genesis 2 and James 4 debunks Harari's arguments. Within our great reset that we're living in, this is also called scary. Earlier, the great reset called it the Internet of Things. Remember that one? The Internet of Things. Now when this came out, you know what they called it? For some of you who don't know, they've called it, uh, let me put a dividing line here. So this is not part of scripture verses. This is a separate category. They called it scary internet of bodies. That's what they now called it. Because technology like Neuralink, Synchron, and these advancements, they're realizing now that it's not just an object with an object that we hold in our hands, it's now a part of the body. So this one is from the article, The Sociable. Now, I'm not saying that it's a reliable article, but this article took quotes from all the people from the World Economic Forum, the Klaus Schwab and Harari crowd, right? So it took all their quotes and showed you the scary stuff of what artificial intelligence, what our great reset technology is paving a way for. That basically there is no free choice and that there is a possession from the machine over against the human mind. Title of the article from The Sociable is <laughs> The Great Reset Meets the Internet of Bodies Manipulating Human Behavior with Authoritarian Surveillance. Big Brother's gonna have the power to control you. And by the way, that's not, don't call me, don't say that this is crazy stuff. Even Harari, who's respected amongst liberals, said that and warned about that. And this is the same guy that Obama, Bill Gates, and Zuckerberg said, we recommend his book. And this is something that Christians, not just the globalists, but the Christians already foresaw that and preached about it for a long time. Here's uh, from Rand Corporation. These are big names paving way for the Great Reset and study the Great Reset. Rand Corporation says in their report, the Internet of Bodies might trigger breakthroughs in medical knowledge or it might enable a surveillance state of unprecedented intrusion and consequence. See, you don't have free will, free choice. They're going to intrude into what you do and they can have the power to tell you what to do. This is from Klaus Schwab himself. One silver lining of the pandemic is that it has shown how quickly we can make radical changes to our lifestyles. 
populations have overwhelmingly shown a willingness to make sacrifices. Why? Because he knows that the pandemic has changed things and people are willing to give up some things now. One example is what you want to do. Basically, free choice then. They're willing to comply, to yield. Rand Corporation report, quote, increased IOB, so that's Internet of Bodies, adoption might also increase global geopolitical risks because surveillance states can use IOB data to enforce authoritarian regimes. This is from Xiao uh, Liu, who's uh, part of the WEF itself, World Economic Forum. It's now time for the Internet of Bodies. This means collecting our physical data via devices that can be implanted, swallowed, like a Catholic wafer maybe, all right? Or simply worn, like a mark, like a mark. And I thought that the old man was crazy for teaching that in the tribulation, right? I would, I would recommend to listen Dr. Peter S. Ruckman's Revelation commentary. Buy that commentary. Read, buy his Apocalypse book especially, and all those pictures ever since our 70s to the 90s, he drew all that. You know who's the prophet? Not this guy, man. Ruckman is definitely a prophet, man. This is all for what? Health-related information. It's for the public health. Of course, of course. Here's another quote. The sociable uh, reads this from the Rand Corporation report. Widespread IOB might increase the risk of physical harm espionage, and exploitation of data by adversaries. So they admit it. They admit this. somebody can take control of the machine to control people. This is from Richard Stainings, who was a chief security strategist at Silera. You no longer need to be MI6 and issued a Walther PPK in order to assassinate someone. You just need to gain access to their medical devices. World Economic Forum again. Authoritarianism is easier. How? How is authoritarianism easier? To controlling people e easier? In a world of total visibility and traceability, while democracy may turn out to be more difficult. That's why they want to get rid of democracy more. Humans to make more sacrifices to comply and to yield, to work together for this kind of technology and world that can be for the better good of our health and safety and other stuff. Very disturbing. Very disturbing. Let me read this one. If I mentioned before that technology can control human brains, I have to go back to the source. I think that the devil can use that to possess and control people, correct? All right, I mentioned that before. I mentioned that it's interesting, the Lord Jesus Christ said it was through electricity. He associated electricity with that devil possession or mind control, so to speak. Okay, then is this scientific? Is this scientific that, yes, electricity can be used to control the brain? The title of the article from New Scientist, Mind Controls, Running Electricity Through the Skull, by David Robson. It sounds too good to be true, changing the brain's activity simply by placing electrodes on the surface of the scalp, but that's the idea behind TDCS, they called it. And then they give uh, other information about this device. But uh, here's another interesting quote they said. Uh, it's not really that much of uh, adverse effects. They said there may be some mild tinglings under the electrodes, but that's about it. So it's not that bad. It doesn't have very bad side effects. Don't worry about it. So because it doesn't have very bad side effects, these things you can wear. I mean, we've been used to this already, so this is not a problem. This is not that scary. And then let's put this on 
And then electricity can control your brain's activity. And what did God, God see Satan as? Electricity, lightning, in that demon possession. Do you see how spirit world connects with science, the science realm now? That occultism has an association with science. Now, I'm not bashing science. Science is a wonderful thing. It's the study of God's natural creation. But don't think that, don't be naive to think the devil can't use science. That's why occultists, they love science and can use science for something. This is a very interesting person. Giordi Rose, for some of you who don't know. Giordi Rose, title of their video is Giordi Rose of Kindred AI presents super intelligent, a super intelligent aliens are coming to Earth. That's the title of the video in techvancouver.org, okay? Their official website. I'm not quoting from some kind of uh, amateur blog, all right? You know what he points out right there? Mm, this is the, the big bomb that I'm going to drop now. Uh -oh. The finale, all right? Uh -oh. Now, he mentions right here, and we already heard about CERN calling it portal, right? For the science realm, so to speak. And it's interesting, Metaverse calls it portal to enter the spirit, excuse me, the science realm, right? Now we see these people like Jordi Rose who actually mentioned a person that he admired and he doesn't mention this guy as a famous scientist, but this guy, his name is H.P. Lovecraft. Have you ever heard of that guy? H.P. Yeah. Lovecraft would match Yuval Harari to a T. Yeah. Atheist, does not believe in the spirit world, but he is infatuated with science and theosophy ideologies. Theosophy, for some of you who don't know, Madame Blavatsky is connected to a lot of dark globalists. She's the one that mentions about Lucifer is basically a beneficial deity or one of those beneficial spirits. If you look at the Theosophist societies, they connect to a lot of uh, occult groups and elitists. Isn't it interesting that Jordi Rose says, one of my favorite uh, person that I'm interested in is H.P. Lovecraft? Why? Because scientists are now interested, see this? in the spirit realm, even though they're atheists. They don't believe, it, obviously, in a supernatural realm, but they see, they get deeper so much into the scientific realm that they said it looks like a supernatural realm to us. So we'll use supernatural terms. To us Christians, we know what it is. We admit that, yeah, you are hitting the supernatural realm, even though you can use scientific experiments to dabble into it. Why? Because there is scripture where people get into science, they can dabble into the spirit realm. But I'm not going to get into apologetics on that one and debate about that one. That's a whole other story that I want to give a teaching on, which is incredibly interesting, like I keep saying, but I can't do it in this teaching. Let's move on. Title of the article, and study this guy. This is from Claremont University, okay? Title of the article, Structurally Cosmic Apostasy, The Atheist Occult world of H.P. Lovecraft. And Jordi Rose, in that video that I gave from YouTube, referred to him. Now you can find the bridge of Satanism and atheism. You always wondered about that. How? How? Look at the Satanic church today. A lot of them are who? Atheists. They don't have to believe in the spirit well, realm to worship Satan. All right, but I'm not going to get too much into that. That's a different teaching, like I said. Let's get back to, to the point here. I want to show you this bomb. Hmm, demon possession, right? What does, when I look at that term, demon possession, and this is what we see as demon possession, don't we? You won't believe it. Okay. What if, let me tell you something, what if, and personally, I believe it, all right? So it's not doctrine, like I said, all right? If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But 
from what I study history, current events, and the Bible, it's all connected together. What if demon possession is basically technology or that electricity that possesses a person? That's what I pointed out earlier, right? Well, what if the definition in the Bible, demon possession, the Lord also sees that it's not too far-fetched where, where it can mean this machine controlling our minds. And you might say, why is that? The reason why is that is let's look at the technology experts themselves on what they would define to them demon possession. Well, let's look at each word. Possession, what does that mean? Possession, what that means, and this is found at Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Let's look at possession. It means to have power over. Have, forget devils possessing. Let's say, some, can we admit technology has power over you? It also means invisible agent that controls you. Huh. Now, but uh, you don't have proof about the next part about demon. How are you going to do that? Title of the article from techtarget.com. You ready for this? This is mind-blowing. I had no idea. Tech Target is one of those big tech news websites. They have a section called definition. And they have a definition term in tech, demon. A demon is a program or process. Part of a larger program or process. Kind of like YouTube controlling you, Facebook controlling you, and some Christians, when they see their children so much into that, that they're like, you're not the same person anymore. When you're playing with that program in that video game, it's like the devil got a hold of you or demon possession. And we, to us Christians, that's demon possession. Yeah. To the tech world, they can likewise agree in their technological perspective. Demon is a program or process, part of a larger program or process that is dormant until a certain condition occurs and then is initiated to do its processing. Who's included in this? Eric Raymond cites an artificial intelligence application as an example. An AI program might include a number of demons, one or more, of which might become active when a new piece of knowledge, that's how the devil gets a hold on people, knowledge. And you thought I was crazy last Wednesday about knowledge and image connected with the devil's, ah, ha, 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 I'm right. Mad scientist me. All right. Oh, man. Don't freak out, all right? I'm not becoming evil, okay? <laughs> An AI program might include a number of demons, one or more of which might become active when a new piece of knowledge was acquired by the AI program. If the new knowledge affected a particular demon's own sphere of knowledge, it would spring into action and create new pieces of knowledge based on its particular inference rules. Yeah, for now. Wait till that spirit takes a hold of that and has its own rules, huh? Each, and that's what the scientists are afraid of. This thing, or program, or whatever you want to call it, they're afraid it might go loco and do its own thing, right? It might go by its own rules to control people, right? For now, this is going by the rules that the tech Scientists created on what these programs do. It'll go by the rules that they laid out for now. Wait till a demon gets a hold. Wait till it goes berserk, which is why Geordi Rose and Elon Musk, they actually admitted about this artificial intelligence. They called it demons. Yeah. In that video, he actually called it demons. Yeah. Geordi Rose, he called it demons when the machine takes control over us. He quotes also Elon Musk, and you can look at the Washington Post article, title from Elon Musk, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning, meta, portal, we are summoning 
the demon. He says here, I think we should be very careful about artificial intelligence. If I were to guess like what our biggest existential threat is, it's probably that. So we need to be very careful with the artificial intelligence. Increasingly, scientists think there should be some regulatory oversight, maybe at the national and international level. Yeah, it's called Antichrist, NWO, just to make sure that we don't do something very foolish. With artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. In all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, it's like, yeah, he's sure he can control the demon. Didn't work out. You see now how occultism bridges very well with the science realm? And you thought that was impossible? You thought that was impossible? The, con the definition continues that I was reading on. Uh, each of these new pieces of knowledge might in turn activate additional demons that would continue to filter through and refine the entire AI knowledge base. What did you study about demon position? One demon goes in, and what happens? You summon additional other demons. Now, you know why this is mind-blowing? This is what I thought. How many programs you got in here? You got a legion of demons. And when your child is demon-possessed or you're, you feel that demon possession when you're getting so addicted to electronics, it's not just one demon, it's multiple. Why? Because you're living in a world of people who use multiple things at once. You caught guilty of that? I don't recommend that. Scientists don't even recommend that too. Health experts don't recommend that. That is growing. That is growing. That's why it's no problem for the devil to put multiple demons on an individual when the mark of the beast gets out like that. Because we're already messing with it. We're already messing with it. Title of the article from Live Science. Digital overload. Is your computer frying your brain? And then another article that proves what I said is from Statista. Title of the article. Second screen usage. Statistics and facts. Due to the omnipresence of mobile devices, well, sounds like he shall be as God, Satan, right? In modern life, it is no surprise that media consumption has increasingly multi-layered with many consumers using an additional screen for secondary activities while watching TV. It says right here, this is scary, 46.7 million adult-related content simultaneous internet and TV users in the United States. This figure is projected to increase to 54.2 million users in 2022. No, in 2018. In 2016, get ready for this, 2016, an estimated 68% of internet users do multiple over half of America. Over half of America in the United States already use multiple devices. If you ever wondered, remember those verses about getting your mind renewed? If you've been having a problem with focusing or doing your everyday activity, I think you're messing with devils that you have to start to slow down. Or maybe for some of you, try shutting off one week. Let's see how your spiritual life feels like or your fleshly addiction feels like. Amen. That speaks volumes right there. So demon is that, that's layman's term. I know that there's more specifics about it, but basically it shows a possibility what the devil can do. Program and have power over invisible agent. There it is. And don't forget that demoniac of Gadara who is possessed by a what? Legion of devils. How are we going to get that today in modern society? If you're the devil and you want to demon-possess people, how are you going to do that if people don't do that in the spirit realm? Do it in the science, in the technological realm that can hit that spirit realm. Boo. The reset is now here. What are you going to do about that? Father God, I pray that today's teachings have been eye-opening to the people and have made us be more aware of Satan's devices, as 2 Corinthians 2 said, and that we are to try to stay away from those things.
to grow ourselves into your word, interacting with other people, with the local church, not internet church, to be able to uh, communicate and to react with people and assembly, because that's so needful. Of course, I'm not saying that people who watch us online who don't have a Bible-believing church to shut us off or to unsubscribe from us. Uh, it's better than nothing out there. But I pray that it will help them at least to check themselves and to see, have I delved too much into Internet? Not just, uh, not just watching Pastor Kim's stuff. I'm not talking about that, but so many other things on the Internet that I went down a rabbit hole and watched many different preachers' videos online, online, and became addicted. I pray that we'll break free from that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good night.